Oh, how cool. Hi. Hi. So here's what we're going to pretend. I'm short. You good? Okay. <laughs> here's what we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend that I'm just asking mom some questions. We're chopping it up, and, and you guys get to listen in on the conversation. And so uh, full disclosure, I sent her these questions long ahead of time. I've seen some of her responses, and they are fire. Can I see your notes real quick? Yeah. One of the things I love about my mom is, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you can give me a really tight shot on the camera. Um, she has emojis in her notes. Yeah. Not only is she like a living, breathing, walking emoji, she has them in her notes. And I love this so much. Also, I love uh, your, your lifelong wrestle with technology and how you printed your notes on cardstock somehow. It's a gift. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like, which tray? I don't know. That one. And it's like, wow, this is like a, this is like a billboard. <laughs> okay, so I asked her three questions. I'm going to tell you all three questions um, that I asked, and then we're going to tee them up together, and I'm just going to let her go, and she's got a bunch of scripture in there and a bunch of wisdom. But what I wanted to know from you, because we have a church um, full of people who are in very different seasons of life. And I'm thankful. For that. Are you thankful for a church that we got young people, we got uh, uh, some middle people, and we got some young, young in spirit people, the Silver Saints. Shout out the Silver Saints. Come on. Old is a mindset. I know some old 18-year-olds because you old up in your brain. And I know some young and spry 85-year-olds. Shout out Silver Saints. But we got moms in all different seasons of life. You might be in here and be watching us online and be like, I'm not a mom. But if you are a woman with an earshot of this and you're saying, I desire to be a mom, I will be a mom in the future, um, then buckle up and write down notes because you are getting, I'm 35. That took me a second. I'm 35. And so you, you have 35 years worth of wisdom I'm the oldest. Uh, my second brother was up here leading us in worship. That's Jonathan, and he is 34, correct? 34, 35, he's 34. I have a 32-year-old brother. 32-year-old brother. Sorry, we're doing math up here on the fly. And then a 30-year-old sister. So there's four of us kids in like a four-and-a-half-year span and y'all better praise God that she didn't lose her ever-loving mind over that. And during that season, she won't tell you these, but I'm giving you the highlights because sometimes I think when you listen to these, you can disqualify yourself because you're like, yeah, that's nice, but, but I'm busy, and I got stuff on my plate. Pastoring a church, you and, and dad planted the church when you were 19 years old. 19 years old, senior pastor's wife. I could barely put my shoes on when I was 19. That's why I wear flip-flops. That's right. Yeah, great point. What a zinger. Here we go, right off the bat. Why did I give her a mic? She knows too much. Um, yeah, pastored for that church 17 years. 19? 19 years of faithfulness there. And then you guys have been here with us from the beginning, part of the team and many different ways. And so I asked you three different questions. What were some of your biggest wrestles when you were a new mom, when you were a middle mom, and then as an empty nest mom? What were some of your biggest wrestles in your mind, in your heart? So I hope that captures most of the people within earshot. We have, where are the empty nester moms at? We got empty nester moms. Look at that. Shout out empty nester moms. Where are my middle moms at? You got kids between like eight and 18, the middle moms. We got middle moms. And then we got new moms up in this house. Where are my new moms at? Let's go. I'm, I'm glad that, that like the, the most noise came from the new moms. I would think they'd be like, Ugh. like where are the new moms? They're like, yeah. So yeah, their kids are upstairs right now. They're like, I have a break. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go chronologically. New mom, middle mom, empty nest mom. So talk to me about Kim Bingle, 
19 years old, you have a newborn. By the time you're 25, you have four kids. By the time you're 24, you have four kids. 24 years old, four kids, all under five and under, pastor in a church, and we crazy. <laughs> Talk to us about how you survived, how you fought, what you did. New mom season, three, two, one, go. Uh, the best years of my life. Truly. Mm. And then, so you guys probably know that I I cry really easy. So if I do, just, you know, go with me. Um, Thank you. But um, really the best years of my life. And I look back and I I honestly can barely remember anything that was negative. All I can remember are the highlights and how great it was, sorry, (laughs) to raise up these four precious kids (laughs) that God gave. Um, to us, and um, I want to encourage you as new moms that, you know, we have moments in our life where things happen, and we're just like, God, help me, help me, God, and I want to share a story with you that Carly reminded me of. It's, it's a family story, and, <laughs> and it will forever be in the annals of the Bengal history, and um, when Josh was just, oh, maybe a month old, he was born in June, and so about a month old, we, had, um, we were associate pastors at a church um, when we very first got married. I married my youth pastor, you guys. And uh, so married right into ministry. Find you a man in church. <laughs> That's right. Yes, five days after I graduated from high school, I married a pastor and immediately became a pastor's wife. And then four months later, we found out that we were two months pregnant. So we spent our first That's anniversary. That's six months. It is, Yeah whirlwind and, and spent our first anniversary in the hospital having a baby who we were storming the gates of heaven yes. declaring the word of God for his life because the enemy wanted him. And we said, not today, devil, not today. Quick, in case you're wondering, I, we won't tell the whole thing, but I was born dead, collapsed lung, no brain activity, no oxygen, How, 25, 30 minutes? Something like that. Yeah. They, they put me out right away. Yeah. So dad really is the, the champ here. He's the one who really just stood yeah. Said and declared. Said I would declared. survive, and if I mm-hmm. did, I would have no brain activity, mm-hmm. none of that. Yeah. But God had other plans. That's right. That's right. So when she yeah. says spent her first anniversary storming the gates of heaven, yeah. that's what she's Declaring about. the word of, of God over our family, over our son. So anyway, and, and they had told us that he would be in the hospital for months. And day four, we take home our baby. Completely healed. The Spartan Completely kicked whole. the door on the way out. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And but at that time, uh, car seats were not um, mandatory, and <laughs> we didn't have a car seat. <laughs> yes. The eighties were wild, yo. <laughs> and so you know, we take him home, and and we had gone to church, and on our um, after church, we went to Corky's. Anybody here remember Corky's? Yeah, it was a burger place that's now Zips at Five Mile. But it was Corky's. And um, I had Josh in this wicker basket <laughs> carrying thing in the back seat Freaking because Moses. we didn't have a car seat. Yeah. And so, and our car was a hatchback. It was, was a two. It, was it like a picnic basket? Like, hey, boo, boo. <laughs> kind of, yes. Like it hey, opens boo-boo. on one side and on the other side you just slip your infant. Didn't have it. the top parts, but definitely, I mean, it really was like a, a Moses, <laughs> a baby Moses. And uh, so we're, it's really, really hot that day. It was in July. And... <laughs> We have a two, two-door hatchback car, and so you open the door, and I had to push the seat forward, and I reach in to grab him, and I'm pulling him out, and as I pull him out, my hands are hot, I hit something, I let go of one handle, and baby Josh rolls out, lands on the hot asphalt, and rolls under the car. <laughs> I am frantic, like, my baby, my baby, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And thank goodness, my husband is such a fast, thing, quick thinker. You know, he gets him and gets him back. And, you know, Josh was fine. He was I mean, fine. debatable. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So things happen. <laughs> <laughs> things happen. <laughs> and all the new moms said, praise the Lord, things oh happen. Oh my gosh so many stories. I was walking around the corner and I had Josh on my hip and I took the corner a little tight. <laughs> took the corner a little tight. Coming in hot through turn three. And hit his head on the, the corner and I mean that's just two things 
that happen. Just two things. Just two. But anyway, all that to encourage you that, you know, that God is faithful. His word is true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And he's going to be 36. So there yeah. you have it. Praise the Lord. But one of the things that I wrestled with when, um, as a new mom, um, love the baby stage, and really that's where I love to serve in G Kids is in the babies. I just love babies. I love little kids. I can't not talk to them in public. I just, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's a problem. can't. You know, it's just <laughs> such self-control, and I usually fail. So anyway, one of the things that I really wrestled with was, God, I just love these sweet little babies so much. And, and I see these junior high kids, because we had junior high age kids at church, and I just felt so inadequate um, talking to them. I didn't know what to say to them. I mean, it was almost like I, you know, we spoke different languages. And I was so worried that I would not um, be able to relate to my kids as they grew. And this is something that the Holy Spirit gave me in Matthew 6, 33 and 34, the God's Word translation, it says, but first be concerned about his kingdom and what has his approval. Then all these things will be provided for you. So don't ever worry about tomorrow. After all, tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Worry can be such a life sucker. You know, we just are so focused on, on what could happen, what might happen, and we live in fear that we miss out on the most amazing moments with our kids. And so um, I want to encourage you as new moms to not put so much pressure on yourself. And the thing that really was the focus and the foundation for me was, number one, being in the Word every day and praying every day, praying in the Spirit. If you're not baptized with the Holy Ghost, please see me because I want to pray with you yeah. because it is such a powerful language for us that we may, whoops, you. thank you. We may be, um, you know, fretting. We may not, you know, just feel so, oh my goodness, God, I don't know what to do. But you pray in the spirit mm. and you're so encouraged. It builds you up. It encourages you. And, and the answer will come and God will turn that situation around for his glory, Amen. which he promises in his word. Yeah. And so let the word and prayer be absolutely a priority to you every day. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. I think some of my most common memories of you, I've told you this when we were talking through what you were going to say. <laughs> um, some of my most common memories of you are just you because you stayed home with us until Krista was in high school and I think you started working again. Um, but in would just be you all throughout the day. It didn't matter what, what you were doing, whether it was stuff around the house or taking us to baseball games or whatever, just always praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit. I, like some of my most vivid memories of, as a kid were you like washing dishes and just being with Jesus. Like sometimes I think we can comp overcomplicate it and, and I'm all for solitude and silence and getting time away, but, but you modeled praying without ceasing. That it was just, it was, I could tell that it was a genuine relationship, whether I had those words or not, but from the time I was young, because it was just always, over, she was just always talking to Jesus, always communing, and so that's one of my most vivid memories. Amen. Amen. Another question that I had um, was, I remember um, when you were, probably, I don't know, two or three. Josh has always been brilliant. All of our kids truly are brilliant. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that until the day I die. Mm -hmm. They are brilliant. And, um, but always, you know, they always had such great questions and things that would, as parents, we would determined to take them to the word and, great. and always, okay, this is our book. This is great. what we live by. These are the words that great. we live by. Great. And, and, and so we did our best to teach our kids at a very young age to love the word, mm. to love the Lord, and, and just to serve him with all of their heart. And as a three-year-old, I remember him constantly asking why. Why, 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 why? Or Everybody relate would, to that three-year-old, why, why, Or why? he would have these brilliant responses, and I'd be like, you are three years old. Why are you pushing back? Why are you asking? I mean, legitimately pushing back with like adult questions. And, um, and it just was very frustrating. And I remember just being so exasperated. And um, in prayer, the Lord spoke to me and he said, you're the mom. 
and it brought such peace to me and it just so much clarity that I don't have to defend my role as mom. Wow. I am mom. Wow. I am who I am. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to defend that. And so it helped me to change my posture. It helped me to change my attitude, my perspective on things that I could lovingly correct him yes. and not feel that I had to defend myself. Mm. And um, in the scripture, in Proverbs 1, 8, and 9, this is the God's Word translation. It says, my son, listen to your father's discipline and do not neglect your mother's teachings because discipline and teachings are a graceful garland mm. on your head oh. and a golden chain around your neck. And so how important read, it read is. Read that second part again. Uh, discipline and teaching. Um, They're graceful. Because discipline and teachings are a graceful garland on your head and a golden chain around your neck. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. good? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, mm. encouraging you as a parent not to be discouraged, but, you know, train up your children. Um, later on, I'm going to talk about that scripture a lot. <laughs> Um, about training up your child in the way that they shall go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. That was like a life scripture for me in so many phases of our kids' lives. And so I think I reference it in every single phase. Great. <laughs> the third thing uh, that I have here is sending my kids off to school for the first time. And what a struggle that was for me. Um, it was such a struggle that for kindergarten, I homeschooled Josh. And because I couldn't bear the thought of sending him out into the world, into school. And we got one of the top curriculums that they were using in Christian schools. It was highly rated. And he was through the entire curriculum by Christmas. And it was then that I realized I'm out of my league. <laughs> <laughs> I am not equipped for this. <laughs> so <laughs> we repeated. And, um, and, and Lonnie and I just... I learned my colors twice. <laughs> We just, um, you know, prayed, and I was so, I'd heard so many things about public school, and, and I just was so concerned about it, and I didn't want to send my kids there, and, and he looked at me, and he said, you went to public school, and I went to public school, and we turned out okay, and I was like, you are so right, and he goes, and look at the advantage that our kids have in um, the things that we already know that we can impart in them, and also with me being involved in public school. I volunteered at every one of the schools. I was volunteer coordinator at every school at one point in time, if not simultaneously. We were involved in the parent-teacher organizations. We were, uh, my husband was involved in the school board, citizens advisory committee. We did everything we could to have the Jesus influence right. there. And one of the things, we had a, a teacher in our, in our um, church, and he told us, he said, please, please do not take the Christian kids out of the public school because the only way that we can have dialogue about Christianity is if they bring it up. And we need that. We want that. We want that influence. And so for us, that was the decision that we made. Yeah, that was the guys. conviction that we yeah. had. And that was our conviction. And, and so you have to go with what you believe God yes. is leading in the direction he is taking you. But for us, that's, that was it. And, um, and we just trusted the Lord. And when the kids came home from school and we'd ask them about their day, it gave us opportunities to pray with them. It gave us opportunities to share scripture with them and say, well, honey, the reason that they're acting like this or the reason that they're doing this is because they don't know. Mm. They don't know Jesus. Mm. But you do, and you can share the love of Jesus yeah. with them. I remember a story. I'm going to reference Jonathan here. A story of um, Jonathan in elementary school where there was this one kid that was bullying him quite a bit. And back then, you know, bullying, they just, ah, you just deal with it. And it's part of the it, curriculum. <laughs> true, yeah. And, um, and uh, so Jonathan, you know, he'd come home and say, Mama, you know, he's, he's doing this and he's doing this and he's so mean to me. And, and I just, I don't understand why I've never done anything to him. And so we would pray and, we, and his name was Levi and we would pray for Levi. And one day, Jonathan went up to him at recess when Levi was harassing him and he said, Levi, do you want to be my friend? And it just stopped Levi in his tracks. And he said, well, yes. And Jonathan said, okay. And from that point on, Levi never bothered him again. And it was something so simple that the reason that, you know, he just didn't know, Levi didn't know how to express that he wanted to be Jonathan's friend or that he wanted to be in his circle or anything. And it was just so simple and wow. so precious wow. that, yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. Okay, talk to me about 
middle mom. Middle mom. So we okay. zoom, we fast mm-hmm. forward, we go to yeah. middle mom, middle school, high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. NSYNC is hot in the streets. Yeah, they were. New kids on the block. Bye, and- bye, bye. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was, this is the season where youth groups would like take secular songs and change the words to yeah. be like yeah. all about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In case you're wondering where we're at in uh, Christian pop culture, that's where we're at <laughs> yeah. at this point in middle yeah. momming. All right. So a middle mom question, and I, I'm going to share something um, in the, the a few minutes about Jonathan, but I want to share a positive thing because that one you're going to laugh about, but I want to paint him positively. <laughs> That just was a terrible setup. But um, Jonathan, we had gone camping, and um, this was when Jason was a baby. Jonathan was almost two. Josh was three and a half. And uh, we were setting up camp, and, you know, as parents, you, your kids can be gone in an instant. And so we're sitting there. We're, you know, we're getting everything set up. And the next thing we know, this older gentleman is walking up the path with Jonathan holding his finger, eating a cookie. And he came to us and he said, does this one belong to you? And we said, yes. Oh, my goodness. You know, we're frantic, you know, thinking what terrible parents we are. We lost our kid. We've only been here 10 minutes. And um, he said, we watched him go from campsite to campsite, greeting everybody, saying hello, just checking on people. And that's exactly how Jonathan is even today. He's so compassionate and so concerned about people. He loves people, and justice is so important to him. And so that's a a very precious memory we have of him. So many precious memories of all of our kids. But, you know, that was one that was sweet. So then, fast forward to, uh, you know, middle mom. And um, he, he liked to challenge sometimes as kids do occasionally. And um, I would tell him, Jonathan, you know, I need you to take that cup and put it in the sink. And his cup, yeah, see, he's laughing already. The cup, you know, was part part full of, um, actually, it was a can of soda. And I was like, Jonathan, you need to take that can of soda and throw it away. And he was like, what, this can of soda? And I said, yeah. And he took his finger, and he just, looking at me, not losing eye contact at all, takes his finger, scoots that can of soda, and watches it fall onto the floor and spill. And he just looked at me. I was so mad at him. But the thing is, is that the kids, even when I was mad at him, I would laugh oh, because yeah. it was oh, yeah. so funny. Yeah. But I was mad. And, and I was like, Jonathan David Bingle. And I chased him out the door and down the street. I was so mad at him. I never caught him. He's yelling, Mom, Mom, stop, stop. <laughs> I mean, I never would have heard him or anything, but, you know, he, he was scared of me at that moment. But, you know, as, as parents, you know, have fun with your kids. Enjoy them. You know, don't be concerned about, about too many things. You know, they're going to turn out okay. <laughs> These guys did. Um, one of the questions I had is, am I doing this well? And will my kids turn out okay? This is a question as a middle mom. As so a middle you've mom. you've gone through the mm-hmm. stages. You've sent them to school. Mm-hmm. You're involved in the yes. school. Yes. And now you're wondering... Am I doing a good job? Yeah. Are they going to be okay? Yeah, yeah. Because we have moments where we question, you know, our ability to parent, our ability, man, Lord, am I, am I ruining them? Am I, am I, you know, messing them up? <laughs> and, um, you know, again, this scripture in Proverbs 22, 6, that says, train up a child in the way that they shall go, and when they're old, they will not depart yeah. from it. And so faithful is God to his word, and faithful to that in every season for us of raising our kids was that, that scripture was a foundation for mm. us. And then in James 1.17, says, Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. That is the um, Passion Translation. And, and remembering that my family is a gift to me. Mm. You know, my children are a gift. And that took some pressure off of me as a mom that I didn't have to feel so incredibly responsible. You have a responsibility as a parent, yeah. but they, are, they belong to the Lord. And we yes. dedicated our children as soon as they were, right after they were born, we dedicated them. And many of you have, have participated in baby dedication, dedicating your kids back to the Lord. And we did that and said, God, these are your kids. Yeah. Give us wisdom. Yeah. Give us direction. Right. Help us to train them up to love you and to honor you with all right. of their heart. And so knowing that helped me in this is a gift. And how do you treat a gift? 
You want to treat that gift with such mm. care, with compassion, wow. with love. You want to respect them. Wow. And um, that's one of the things that we talked about, too, when raising kids is if we show our kids respect, even when they're being disobedient, even when they're being as naughty as can be, if, if we are treating them with respect, they're going to turn around and show great, us respect great, because great. We're, we're modeling that for them. Very good. And, and that's one thing that, that, for me, I see in public a lot, that parents are so disrespectful to their children mm. that it's no wonder their children are disrespectful mm. to them. Mm. And so I would say, you know, respect, respect mm-hmm. your kids. Another one? Yeah. Okay. Another one. Um, another one. Another one. How do I refresh myself so my family gets the best of me? This, you know, you can feel overwhelmed. You, you've got snotty noses, laundry, messy house. I'll tell you a story about laundry. This <laughs> is 100% true. 100%. Um, we, you know, with four kids, I just always felt like I was behind the, behind on laundry. Always, always have this laundry piles, whether they were clean or dirty, you know, if they were, they were dirty and they needed to be washed or they were cleaned and they were piled up, but I just did not have the time or the moment to fold them and put them away. And so getting ahead of the dirty laundry, I would drink a big glass of water before I went to bed because I knew that in the middle of the night, I'd have to get up and go to the bathroom. And then I would go transfer the laundry. That's amazing. You just, you got to capture the time where you can. You got to make a way. And it's absolutely true. I did that. And, um, and you know, there are seasons where you just What a hack. That. that is yeah. great. Then as they got older, we trained them how to do their own laundry and, and taught them, okay, this is good for you. I always wanted, um, uh, with three sons, I wanted their wives to thank me, not, you know, be mad at me because <laughs> they didn't know how to do anything. And um, so we taught them to do laundry. And their laundry was their responsibility. We taught them how to clean house. And they had a chore chart. Every week there was vacuuming and dusting. There, was, there were dishes. There, um, Bathroom. Bathrooms and garbage. Mm-hmm. And garbage duty. They when you got laundry. garbage week, you were like, party! Exactly, exactly. But their bedrooms were always a part of, yes. of that. Every day they had to make their bed before they went to school. And, and then when they came home, they had to do their responsibilities. We didn't call them chores. We called them responsibilities. Because in life, we have responsibilities. Right. You know, when you become right. an adult, you right. have responsibilities. So we that was always a question, too. Our friends that, like, get home from school and, like, just go ham in the park and be like, did you do your responsibilities? So if you had garbage week, you're like, yup. <laughs> that took two seconds. Yeah. Do your responsibilities? Did you do your Bible reading? Uh, fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we go play. Priorities. Mm-hmm. Then they'd go play. Yeah. Um, let's see. When I was talking, there was something else I wanted to share. Hold on. Oh, I was talking about being refreshed. And, um, you know, how do you find this? Well, Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. If you haven't read it, please read it. Make it a part of your regular, you know, monthly check-in. And um, it talks about the virtuous woman. And, you know, she is such a great example to us on how to lead her home. And it says that she rises up early and sets her maidens to her task. And my joke was always, and this is where the emojis are in my notes. My joke was always, where are my maidens? Where are my maidens? I need to set them to task. There's tasks to be done. Where are they? And, um, you know, she rises early and sets her maidens to their tasks. And um, she's, she's organized. She's prepared. And, you know, whatever organization looks like for you, it's different for everybody. But whatever you can do to be organized and, and get your day set. And the most important thing, of course, is spending time with the Lord. And as Josh was saying, you know, there would be times I'd be, I'm doing dishes because I would, I would try to capture times throughout the day mm. where I could have a few minutes with the Lord. Mm. I, and that's where the refreshing comes in. In um, Proverbs 11:25, it says, A generous person will prosper, and whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Mm. And I think a lot of times we can get so focused on ourselves and our own needs and how our needs aren't being met and, and on and on and on. And truly, as a, as a parent, it's very selfless, mm. absolutely selfless. Mm. You've got to set aside your own desires and thoughts um, so that you can raise up those kids. But what a blessing. And I'm here to tell you it happens in an instant. I mean, he's going to be 36, and I still remember there are times, well, he'll be up here preaching, and he'll, an expression, and it'll flash back to when he was two years old, and that same expression, and I see that sweet little two-year-old on the platform just preaching, but Josh, you know, has always had a heart for the Lord, and even, you know, uh, later on as he went off the rails, which we'll talk about, 
in the next. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the, the next segment here. But, um, you know, just, just trusting in the Lord. And when you are refreshing yourself in the Lord and then refreshing, your, refreshing others around you, so you're doing things for your family, you're lovingly doing them, not, you know, resentfully, but lovingly doing them for your family, there's refreshing that comes Great. in that. And there's such reward. Great. So, so if I'm, <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap these two and then we'll move <clears throat> to the third. The first one. Tell me if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing you saying is there's a repeated theme in there about how you were pointing us to the word all the time. You didn't wait till we were like 15. It's like when we were kids pointing us to the word, you were in the word, you were in prayer, pointing us, setting that foundation. And then to me, it sounds like what you're saying is that there's, you move to the place where you're giving some responsibility and you're expecting some things and you're refreshing yourself in that middle season, making sure to refresh yourself, trusting that, that like you said, that, that we are a gift to you. Your kids are a gift to you. And so trusting that since you've dedicated them to the Lord, that you're just stewarding in this season. You're guiding, you're leading, but that, but that God, God is taking care of them yeah. also. And that lifted a weight from you in that middle season. Am I hearing that right? Yes. Praise the Lord. And, and in praying, you know, we have moments where we may be exasperated with our be, the behavior of our kids. And, you know, knowing that they are a gift from God, he knows them better than we do. Mm. And his plan and his purpose for their life is greater than what we want for mm. them. And, and when you take a hold of that as a parent, because we get our own um, expectations, we get our own thoughts and ideas of what we want for our kids, which aren't bad, but we have to submit those to the Lord. Right. We have to submit our own thoughts, our own ideas, our own expectations, and say, God, it's not my will, but yours. Great. Your will be done in these kids. Mm. Raise them up the way, you know, give us wisdom as we're raising them and training them, and you know them better, and, and they're all different. All four of our kids are different. They all came from the same gene pool, but they're different. Yeah. And, you know, we had um, a set of expectations that we had and, and ideas of how we wanted to raise them, but, you know, each one of them are different, and the way that you carry it out with them could be different. Right. And same um, foundation, yeah. but just dealing with them a little bit different because their personalities are different. Right. And um, so that was important, too, and you get that from the Lord, and you get the wisdom from him on, on how to easily um, correct and discipline and love them. Great. Okay, fast forward now. You, you have the kids are out of the house. Mm -hmm. You are... You're managing an eye clinic at this point, so you're working with doctors and surgeons and nurses and employees, and um, so that's the season of life mm -hmm. you are in. Kids have gone through college, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Empty nest mom, what are some things you wrestled through as an empty nest mom? Some things I wrestled through was, you know, in seeing your kids and, and using Josh, and he's been open about, you know, his life and his testimony, and, and um, when he went off to college, he he went off the rails and he, you know, drank a lot. He was involved in a fraternity. Not that that's a bad thing, but it was a very, you know, party school that he went to and they had a reputation for partying. And so I remember very distinctly one time, and I, I don't know if you remember this, but he called me. It was my birthday. Um, so my birthday is April 16th. So on April 15th, it, you know, at midnight into the 16th at 12.01, he calls me. I'm asleep. He calls me. And he was at a party with a bunch of friends, and they're all yelling, happy birthday, Josh's mom, you know, and just, you know, just wasted. And, but in that moment, I could have been heartbroken that my son was drunk dialing me, but there was a part of me that was like, God, thank you that he remembered me. Wow. Thank you that it was important to him to call me. And, you know, we'll, we'll deal with the other stuff later. But thank you <laughs> that that was important to you. You know, it was important to him. And, and then praying. Oh, my goodness, praying. And again, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that they should go. And then when they're old, they will not depart from it. And, um, again, trusting as he went off to college. You know, I thought I was going to be the one that was boohooing on the couch. It was actually my husband who was, who was weeping as, you know, we send our son off to college. And, and I'm like, yes, honey, have fun. <laughs> Have a great life. Have a great life. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, those moments where they're not doing, you can see that they're not doing it. The fruit of what they're doing. Um, I think it's in Colossians, my walking concordance there. This is the acts of the flesh are obvious. You know, Galatians. I don't, it's in Galatians. Okay. Galatians 5. Oh, thank you. 17. Thank you. 
um, the acts of the flesh are obvious, and it talks about lasciviousness and idolatry and drunkenness and, you know, all those kinds of things that are the acts of the flesh. Those are obvious. And we chose as parents, um, as they entered that, that phase of their life, that we were going to continue to speak what God said Great. about them. That we weren't going to say, what do you think you're doing? You've lost your ever-loving mind. Mm. We were like, hey, man of God, my husband, you know, would talk to Josh, and, and, and Josh would call him at 3 in the morning, and Lonnie would say, hey, man of God, how's it going? What's God saying to you today? And, and you know, just declaring and speaking, because our kids had a lot of prophetic words spoken over them as they were growing up. Plus, we have the Word. We have the Word mm. of God that has been planted in them. And speaking to the Word, what's... What's happening? What's God saying to you? How, are, how is this going? And, you know, um, just, just those were things that we chose to do. And it helped a lot in dealing with the heartache mm -hmm. of watching what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking that I didn't raise them to do that, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. God's word is true. Mm -hmm. It's real. It will not return void. It will do the very thing it was sent to do. And it will prosper. Great. So. I love that speaking to, even though you're heartbroken, you're speaking to, hey, man of God. Hey, man of God. You got more? I do. You got a couple more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. and then, and then mm -hmm. she texted me this morning and said there's three, there's three different groups of moms that I want to pray for. And so maybe we'll do one more, okay. and then we're going to take a moment and let you okay. pray over some moms, okay. both in the room and online. We've got moms online mm -hmm. watching. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, one of the things that, that I wanted to mention is um, in raising up our kids, you know, um, if you're in a home where there's a mother and a father and, and, you know, you're training up your kids and maybe you don't agree. One of the things that was important to us was to make sure that we were in agreement and we did not argue in front of the kids. We did not, you know, bicker about, you know, how we were going to handle the situation. If we were in disagreement, we would excuse ourselves, go into the other room get in agreement mm. and then we would, you know, we would talk it out mm -hmm. and, and then get in agreement and then come back and talk to them. But if we were in a place where we couldn't take that time to, de to agree, um, I deferred to scripture that is in, um, hang on. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, about, it's in Ephesians about submitting to your husband. You know, that's basically the gist of that. Is that, you know, wives, submit yourselves to your husband. And that can be a hard thing because, mm. you know, as a mama bear, you mm. know what you want for your kids. Mm. And so it's hard when we have our own thoughts and our own ideas. But submission is so beautiful mm. and is so freeing mm. and so wonderful. And, and it can seem like it's um, a word that puts you into bondage, but it doesn't. Mm. There's so much freedom mm. in that that I can defer to my husband and say, you're the head of the home and I support you and, you know, I pray for you. And so I want to encourage that in those moments where maybe there is disagreement that, you know, you defer, mm. you defer to the word and always, always defer to the word. Great. If, if what you feel and what you think is contrary to scripture, you're in a dangerous path. And so I want to encourage you to seek the word, mm. seek the Lord, search the scripture and get the word of God on your situation and speak that, and that's what's going to change great. the situation. Great, great. So if I can gather um, one truth from this last stage, um, it sounds to me like a whole lot of trust that the seed that you've sown will not return void. And then speaking to the man of God and the woman of God, even though there are things that probably you would love to correct and give wisdom in and lean in on. And something I know, I mean, I don't know how difficult it was, but I can say, um, you know, as a, as a younger adult and then even starting the church, I think, I'm sure that there were plenty of things that you guys wanted to weigh in on that you just were like, okay, we just trust God. And I love the beauty in speaking to, you know, you get a 3 a.m. phone call, hey man of God, when you know there's nothing about this phone call that's about to reflect a man of God, but you're, you are, there's, you're just, you're returning to, to the seeds and the foundations of that identity in Christ and who they are. And I don't, I don't know if, if we, if any of you would be having this conversation right now, if it wasn't for a praying mom and, and someone who did that. And so emptiness moms and, and even dads, I pray that that encourages you 
as maybe you're watching your kids stub their toes and make decisions, you're like, that's, that's gonna hurt them in five years. Oh my goodness. And just, hey man of God, hey woman of God, I'm gonna start calling Solomon that. He's only four. What's up, man of God? He is, he is. Yep. Man of renown. Yes. And she's a woman of virtue, woman yes. of excellence. Woman of excellence. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, can we praise God for that, for that word? Hopefully that blessed you and encouraged you. Can we stand? Together, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna let you. I'm all kinds of a mess up here, but I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you pray. Okay. For some mamas. Okay. So the first group I want to pray for. If you'll just close your eyes, and um, I, the first group I want to pray for, and those of you that are watching online. By the way, Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Carol Flinders, who watches from Surprise, Arizona, online. Love you, mom. Um, I want to pray for the moms that are dealing with infertility whether it's been diagnosed or you've been struggling to have a baby and you've not been able to, I believe that God is here. I believe the Holy Spirit is here and he wants to do a work in your body. So if that's you, just, just right where you are, I want everybody to close your eyes and we're just going to pray. Let's get in agreement with the word. Father, I just thank you for your word, and I thank you that children are in heritage of the Lord, and you created us to be fruitful and to multiply. I speak to these wombs that have been closed, and I commend them to open. I speak to anything that's blocking or anything contrary to your life and nature that's keeping this, these people from, these precious moms and dads from um, conceiving. I just come against that in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for wholeness, wellness, completeness in their bodies. And I thank you that the fruit of their womb is blessed. And they will have their quiver full as your word promises in Jesus' name. The second group I want to pray for are the moms who are disillusioned. That, sorry, it's going to get me choked up. Where? You had a vision of what you thought your family should be, what you wanted when your, sorry, when your kids were little, this vision, and, and you're in a season where now it seems so exactly opposite of, of what you were hoping for and what you were praying for and what you thought it should be. I want to pray for you. Because in that moment of disillusionment, I want you to know that God has, he has never left you. He's been there with you. He's walking through that valley with you. And so I want to pray for you. Father, I just lift up these moms who are dealing with the disillusionment of parenting, dealing with things that have come up that are just not what they were expecting. And, and they're going through the shame of feeling bad and, and, the, and just the just the ickiness of of all of that that's going on that's involved in that disillusionment and i just speak to their hearts i speak to their lives in the name of jesus that there would be freedom that they would be restored and renewed and refreshed that the joy unspeakable and full of glory would just bubble up on the inside of them and flow out of them that that disillusionment is gone and there would be such hope and such um hope for their future hope for the future with their children and that they would see their children the way you see them, the way you see them as anointed, gifted, called children who are mighty, mighty, mighty on this earth. I just thank you for that, Father. And I just come against this shame and I commend it to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness in Jesus' name. And the last group.